Hello again. Today we're talking about spirituality. What the hell is spirituality? Some of you are asking right now. You don't really know. You haven't got a clue. Is it just figuring out what your star sign is, whether you're a Virgo or whether you're an Aquarius? Uh, I have tried, I've dipped and dabbled into spirituality uh, in my adult life. Um, and I'm very curious about it, I must say. And today we're going to be talking about how you can use spirituality to improve your health, to improve your relationships, to relieve your stress. Uh, and we're really just going to have a, a discussion about what is spirituality, okay? And to help us do that, I've got a spiritual teacher who is from my home country, my native country of Australia, but is now living here in, uh, in Los Angeles, California. His name is Todd Savas. Todd, how are you, mate? Great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, now you and I met just yesterday when uh, you yes. were giving a, a, a little workshop on spirituality. Um, and I participated uh, in, in the group. Was I, was I an all right student? Was I okay? I think you did very, very well, especially if like you're new to all of this sort of stuff. I definitely see you were really open and uh -huh. ready to try something different. And that's kind of all what spirituality is as well. Okay. So to the uninitiated, to the listener who's probably going, spirituality, I don't know what that nonsense is. That's all just woo-woo stuff. What is it? Can you just tell us what it is? I mean, if we boil it down to its most simple definition, it's essentially your personal connection to something bigger than yourself. Mm -hmm. So obviously you see that boiled down into individual expression. So for some people it's going to church, for some people it's crystals, for some people it's drinking, mm -hmm. for some people it's music, for some people it's dance, for some people it's sport. So in each of those expressions, you see people feeling really connected to something. So they're in essence connecting to their soul or their, or their purpose or the feeling of trying to connect to something. So they're elements of the truth of spirituality. So spirit is really, or spirituality is in essence, what you do to feel connected to a greater meaning or a greater purpose. Um, and obviously when we feel connected to something, we feel better we feel happier, we feel like there's more meaning to things, uh, but also we get led in directions that are going to continue to lead us to more of these things that perpetuate that sort of vibe. Depression, anxiety, all of those expressions are all connected to disconnection. Right. So it's the lack of purpose. It's the lack of connection to spirit. Right. Okay. So spirituality, the word spirit is in there. Uh, for some people, I guess they're thinking spirit, well, I don't believe in spirits or I don't believe in some kind of person in the universe or whatever. And totally. so that's the skeptic. But essentially what it is, what you said there is, it's being connected to a greater sense of meaning and being connected to a greater sense of purpose. Right? And in essence, connected to your spirit. Right. Okay. So it's not necessarily connected to spirits, to spirits. Yep. or a God or anything like that. Okay. But it could be. But it could be. Yeah. But in essence, it's really being connected to meaning and purpose. So if I don't feel like I have meaning or purpose in the life, in my life, that would then mean that I'm not, I don't feel that I'm not a spiritual person or I don't have spirit, uh, sp spiritual meaning in my life at that time. It means more so that you're not finding ways to feel connected to it. Right. Every, I mean, the funniest thing is when people say to me, oh, you should meet my friend Fred. He's really spiritual. And I'm thinking, oh, it's almost as cringy as saying to someone that, oh, you should meet my friend because they drive the same car as you. In essence, it's not really that important because every single person is spiritual, like I described before. We just do it differently. Right. So for some people, it's very conscious. Like, I'm not a religious person. I'm a spiritual person. Uh -huh. But then even those people that don't do spiritual things, they still express spirituality in their own way. Yes. Unless, of course, they're ultra, ultra destruct destructive, like I mentioned. Yes. But it's not about it must be like this, it must not. True spirituality is all about that sort of freedom of expressing it and however you feel connected to express it as well. Right. So you are spiritual even though you don't necessarily think you are right. because you're completely associated with developing yourself, mm. which is one of the key components of spirituality because as a soul, our reason for being is to grow, to learn more, to expand more, to develop more. And that's kind of the, the key component of any spiritual practice. Okay. So, um, so if I, uh, 
have practiced say meditation Mm -hmm. and I'm sitting down in a dark room by myself for an hour and I'm just trying not to think or my thoughts are going through. Am I therefore being spiritual because I'm trying to connect to the peace and to the calm? Does that make me spiritual or is it more like I'm trying to just feel something other than I think that it's less about thinking that I'm doing this so I'm spiritual and then I'm not doing that so I'm not spiritual. Mm. Kind of just consider that you're spiritual all the time. Okay. And so within that realm, I could be doing things that are going to connect me better with it. Right. So sure, meditating could make you feel more connected to it. But there's going to be times when you're trying to meditate and you're not going to do so well at it. And so you're going to go into the critical zone of the Virgo and you're going to be like, I'm not doing it successfully. So therefore I'm not spiritual. Right. But yeah. that's not true either. It's just in that moment, it's harder to connect to that. Yeah. That doesn't mean that you're not succeeding at it. I mean, there's no real success or failure when it comes to spirituality because it's just your journey with it. Yes. And so the intention is always, you know, I'm going to try to meditate now because I want to feel more calm or I want to feel more connected. Just because in that moment it might be a little too complicated for your mind to unwind, it doesn't mean you fail at it. So therefore you're not not being spiritual. It's just spirituality is also part of just accepting where you're at in that moment and not being critical of it. Okay. We're talking to Todd Savas, who's a spiritual teacher. Uh, where can we find you online just as before we, we carry on here? Uh, so toddsavas.com, T-O-D-D-S-A-V-V-A-S.com. And There's I'm on two Vs in there, is it? Two Vs. Okay. Spell it backwards and forwards. All right. So um, we did an exercise yesterday. Um, maybe you could just explain what that exercise was and what it was designed to do. And maybe we could just go over that again today, mm-hmm. right now, just so we can show our viewer and our listener. Giving exactly. away all my secret techniques. <laughs> um, so in essence, it's kind of the core of my teaching, which is every single thing in life and how we experience it is based upon a value system. And so what we specifically value is then weighed against what we want, what we don't have, what we can get. And then we drill that into words about us that we either think are valuable or are not valuable. And that then creates issues with relationships and all that sort of stuff. So the actual exercise that we did yesterday was I pose a question to you. What are five amazing things about you? Yes. And so the reason why we frame it like that is one, what is your concept of amazing? And then also what about me is amazing? And then listing or looking into what specific things are. And then through the process of this exercise, I mean, essentially the words which people tell me, I can then work out exactly where their life is, what they're having issues with. Because it's a subconscious or a very conscious script. You're very aware of where your value is or you're not aware, but it's still running either way. So through the journey of this exercise, we can then sort of align that unconscious to being more conscious and then ultimately create different dynamics around you as well. Right. So when you were saying, say, five amazing things about you, uh, you asked me yesterday in front of, it was about 35 people. We actually did this at the Soho house of where I'm a private member um, up in, uh, in West Hollywood here. And uh, there were about, well, maybe there was 30 people in there. And, and you asked me to say five amazing things about myself. And I got to tell you, I felt really awkward because uh, I don't like to big, I felt like I was big noting myself, you know, Absolutely. like I felt like I, I was like, all of a sudden I'm going to praise myself in front of 30 strangers. And so it was very, very awkward. Uh, And we were just talking before we we actually started recording this about Australian culture. We have this thing called the tall poppy syndrome where if you get too too tall or too big for your boots or too successful, so to speak, people want to quickly cut you back down to size. You know, they they don't like you if you, um, if you, you know, talking about your successes too much. It's been a real struggle for me because in America, they always want to talk about their successes mm. um, almost to the point where it's almost a little bit crass, you know? And so there's always this, this struggle that I have with my Australian culture. I've always wanted to be humble and just stay, you know, stay on down in the shadows versus this is who I am and I'm a beautiful, amazing person and these are my successes, et cetera, et cetera. So Absolutely. when you asked me that question yesterday, the Australian cultural um, uh, prison, I guess you would say, sort of came out of me. Um, 
what were the th- do you remember the kind of words that I was using? Because when you said you asked me to say five amazing things about myself, I think I said I'm loyal, like I'm a loyal friend, or I'm a good listener. Mm. I also said that I that I anything I set my mind to, I achieve. If I mm. set goals, I go out there and I make it happen. And then you not so much corrected me, but but you pointed out that some of the things that I had in my list were actually not serving me by actually saying that. So could you just explain that a little bit, please? Yeah, Todd? absolutely. So from memory, I think you said that you were loyal. Did you say loyal? I did. I, I did say loyal. And then it was good listener. Good listener. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And then it was hard worker, goal setter. Um, yeah. And then you based the last one around like, you know, I wanted to be here. I made a way to be here. And yes. Here, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so, then essentially the way that this works is that the spirit, and when I use the term spirit, it is referring to anything intangible that's associated with your well-being. So that could be angels, that could be ancestors, that could be God, that could be Jesus, that could be Buddha, whoever and whomever you connect with. Um, and so the way that it works is that it comes down to, firstly, can you be it in a room by yourself? So ultimately, two of those words, you can't. You can't be a good listener when you're in a room by yourself unless you're listening to the spirit. But what you're really saying is I'm a good listener to other people. Yeah. So that boils down to you're only amazing when you're a good listener. Mm. And the example I gave was does that then mean that someone is sitting next to you and they could be abusing you, but you have to listen to them because otherwise your value that's associated with being a good listener yeah. doesn't get satisfied. Right. So ultimately these words have to be wholly about you, who you are, what you can do um, without the reliance on other people because other people are crazy and sometimes they'll have good days. Sometimes they'll have bad days. Mm-hmm. And so especially if someone says something like I'm a really good friend or loyal, that must then mean that one day your friend Joe, that's like, you know what? You are such a good friend to me. You're like that means so much because that's what I value about myself. Mm. Then the next day he has a really bad day and he's like, you know what? You are the worst person I know. Mm. So because you valued it before, it's impossible in that moment to not value his feedback. Right. Whereas if your words are associated specifically with you that have nothing to do with anyone else, it doesn't mean you're not going to be a good friend, but it means that your value is associated specifically on things that you work with or engage with or things that you are. So yesterday we used examples like obviously intelligent. We use things like um, focused. Uh, what else was there? I think it was, was it powerful? Did it be powerful? I think that was someone else's web, yeah. but you probably went for it as well. Yeah. Intelligent, focused, powerful. Um, uh, uh, was it uh, ma- ma- is masculine one or ma- manly? That's not really, isn't it? I mean, you kind of went into that because another important thing, I mean, essentially ambitious, these words. Co- amb- uh, 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 ambitious was one, I think. Uh, what, was it, what was the word I was looking for? I should uh, uh, um like I always like to learn. So what's the word? Inquisitive, yeah, curious. Inquisitive, curious. Inquisitive, curious. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And so fun. It's a fun one. No, because no, fun. Really. It's kind of about other people or how you may okay engage with others. Happy. You can't say happy because that can change, right? Exactly. Yeah. So intelligent, focused, powerful, ambitious, curious. I'm sure I had a few, a few, a few other ones there. Uh, we said healthy. Healthy was you one. You liked your strong body. I did. So what, can I say a strong, strong body? Is Absolutely. That- and one of the really important things and the most awkward things for people is when I like to throw in at the end of it. Okay. Now tell me two things about your physical form that you think are sexy, hot or handsome or whatever. Yeah. Because that's the sort of bit where people go, uh, I don't know about this. And I said my posture and my smile, that I liked my posture because I, I felt that I was strong and worked out and had muscles and I liked sort of being standing back and, and feeling manly. That made me feel manly. And I liked my smile because, I don't know, I just liked my smile. Um, and it was awkward saying it and it's still a little bit awkward, not as awkward as it was yesterday, um, but my posture and my smile. So the, the point of these, these words then, Todd, really is what? Like why are we coming up with these words? So in essence, what this is teaching you Mm -hmm. is to look at what should be valuable to you. Gotcha. So by us looking at, okay, I value my intelligence, 
because that's kind of critical to who I am and I, I am intelligent. I can do various things, blah, 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 blah. Instead of, you know what, I'm going to value that I'm a good listener because that's going to lead me to awkward scenarios. It's going to lead me into things that aren't necessarily going to have a good payoff. Mm. But similarly, there are worse ones. Like the universe said to me, the worst words you could say, loving, giving, generous, supportive, mm. caring, good mother, good brother, good sister, good father, good. It's all surrounding what you need to be for other people. Right. But the funny thing is that they're the things that you're taught are the best things that you should try and emulate. Yeah, it's tough. It's it's a it's a st- tough tough one to get your head around, isn't it? Because mm-hmm. because in one sense, society says, um, "Oh, that person's so generous and so kind and so giving and so," and it's good to be those things, right? Mm-hmm. And you're not saying don't be those things. You're just saying that when you are talking to the universe or be them as an offshoot of you understanding who you are. Right. Because we could turn this around and say, okay, you want to be loving, caring, generous, supportive. How about you be them to yourself? Mm. And so if that's a challenge to even identify those, it means you're not being loving, generous, supportive to yourself Mm. because you're feeling as though it's uncomfortable to actually praise yourself. Yeah. And so if you can't praise yourself, you're never going to be able to praise someone else. You're only going to be praising them to try and get something in return, which is a sense of value or fulfillment or a connection. So how does one be loving, generous and caring to themselves? Well, I mean, it starts with the capacity of saying five amazing words about myself. Yeah. By setting that sort of dominant intention of I'm going to seek out what's amazing about me, what is valuable, what I do that's fantastic, that is an extension of loving myself because I'm going to really investigate what about me is phenomenal. So as an exercise then to the listener or the viewer, if they're wanting to do this exercise and find their five words, Mm -hmm. what's the key here? Like should they just, I've just been taking notes. If you're watching here, I've just been writing on the right hand side, good. And I've got words like intelligent, focused, powerful, ambitious, curious, healthy, a strong body. And none of those are in relation to other people. And then in the bad list, you've got loyal, good listener, goal setter, hard worker. Oh no, that's, they're okay. Hard work, goal setter and hard worker. Okay. Goal setter is fine. Hard worker can be what I say is a double edged sword. Okay. Meaning by you doing it, does it have some sort of challenge or issue that's going to come from it? And hard worker, yeah, because it means that I'm only going to get benefit by working hard uh, as opposed to smart worker. Yes. Okay. And then supportive, caring, and generous are no good as well. They're bad words for yourself. Right? Exactly. Because so, it means ultimately generous, for example, you're going to attract people that want to get something from you. Yeah. So it's a tough, well, I keep saying using the word tough, but it may appear to be slightly awkward on initial inspection, but you should be writing down these kind of words. Well, whatever words suit you, but words that don't rely on someone else. Absolutely. So we're talking artistic, creative, Mm. dynamic, innovator, um, aware, spiritual, mystical. Um, I mean, then you're going into the physical. It could be tall. It could be short. It could be beautiful. It could be handsome, amazing eyes, blah, 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 blah. So this is a really personal journey because obviously you've got to find the words that actually relate to you. Otherwise, the exercise doesn't do anything. Yeah. It's not about someone else telling you as opposed – I mean, it's fine if the universe is telling you via someone else. But you've got to really look at yourself and find what's great about you. That's the whole purpose of the exercise. When you were doing that yesterday, I was thinking what I would, what I would do is get one of these black Nico pens that I have from my whiteboard here and write it on my bathroom mirror. Mm. So I saw the words when I brushed my teeth at night before I went to sleep and I saw the words when I woke up in the morning. Is that okay? Is it, is, that's bad because you're trying to program yourself instead of investigating and finding it. So, I mean, that's sort of the principle of hypnosis. You're programming yourself to be different. This exercise is a little bit different because what we're asking you to do is to actually investigate what I find valuable and to make sure that my value or what I associate value with is connected to something healthy. But if I've connected, if I've done the exercise and I found the five words, right, and I take it to a spiritual teacher like yourself, Todd, and I say, these are my third five they've words. Been vetted, yeah. And they've been vetted and you say, yep, they're great. Can I not then write them on my, on my bathroom then, mirror? Then you'll go into the habit of not feeling them and just memorizing. 
Right. Because these words are just energetic triggers. Okay. They're what really is sort of tweaked because you find them. And so if you've got them written there, mm. then you may just list them off as opposed to I'm going to feel into it and I'm going to answer the question five amazing things about me are. And then because they're written there, you're going to go from a prompt as opposed to in that moment, you may have generous pop in and then you'll be like, where did generous come from? Mm. And then you can be, okay, I know because I was just hit up by this friend and they want this from me. I don't know how to say no. So the words are going to show or highlight what's going on with you. But if you've got a prompt there, mm. you're not going to be able to just go from what the subconscious is spitting out. At I you. see. So that means, but is a prompt when I wake up in the morning doing the exercise? Absolutely. Because that's posing the question. Uh -huh. What is amazing about me? So you set the intention of I'm going to investigate my value. So it's okay for me to write on my bathroom mirror, do your five things about you test. Or what are five amazing things about me today? Ah, so I can ask that question because Absolutely. if I see it, that will trigger it. But what I yeah. should not do is write down the words. Don't give yourself the answers. Don't give myself the answer. Yep. And these five things can change every day, right? That can be 17 things one day and two Absolutely. things one day. So even so, so a better thing would be for me to write down on my mirror, which I'll do at the end of this, this interview is what are five things amazing about me? Yeah. Yeah. And Absolutely. then just say them in my head or say them out loud. I, I mean, there's no real rule in regards to if it's internal or if it's external, either one's fine. Some people really like and feel it's more powerful. If you verbally express it, it's like stating it to the world, but for <laughs> other people, it's not really necessary. So you kind of just go by what's important to you. Okay. Now that exercise alone, what a five, uh, things amazing about me. Just remember when you, if you're listening and watching this, do not put things like I'm supportive, caring or generous. Don't, don't do it about other people. It has to be to, to you. Things like intelligent, focused, powerful, ambitious, curious, healthy, strong body, goal setter, good posture, smile, have a great smile. I'm creative. I'm innovative. Um, is, loving is no good, right? Yep. Loving and generous are no good. Yep. Okay. I'm tall. I'm handsome. I'm pretty, I have great teeth, I have great hair, whatever, like whatever it is for you, these kind of things will then, what, what will they do? What's the benefit? I mean, obviously we're loving and caring ourselves, but the, the emotional reaction we get to this is what, Todd? Okay, so we can look at this two ways. One, this is going to help everyone with everything. But what we can actually do is, if I said to you, what's one area of your life that's lacking that needs help? Mm -hmm. What, whatever, it could be money, it could be career, it could be love, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Whatever your answer is, then we can turn to the words and we can say, okay, so my words need to be filling the gap as to what that is. Mm. So if it's love, for example, then your words need to be reflective of attractive components in a relationship. Right. So that if the issue is people aren't like coming to me, like, and they're not being attracted to me, then you need to turn your words to sexy, to handsome, to I'm this, I'm that, mm. because that's where your mind isn't. Mm. You're not attracting dynamics that reflect an awareness of your physical attraction. Right. But if you attract people, but they're not clicking energetically or they're drainers or they're clueless, whatever the case may be, then the words go deeper into it and you want to then develop the deeper elements of the emotional component that it comes from. Mm. Because everything you're experiencing is a reflection of the words that you subconsciously or unconsciously or rather consciously or unconsciously are aware of saying. So let's look at my personal situation when it comes to relationships. Yep. I'm 40. I don't, I'm not married. I don't have children. I don't have a girlfriend at this, this time. I was in a relationship for seven or eight months earlier this year. We split up a few months ago. Very amicable split. Had a girlfriend before then. I was saying to you before we were recording that I find it difficult to connect with American women in general. Mm -hmm. um, there's some kind of, I don't know what it is. I mean, I'm very attracted to them, but for whatever reason, I can't quite make a relationship work. Um, uh, I, I do suspect that there's something emotionally or there's some kind of pattern there's where a gap. there's a gap, there's mm -hmm. a gap there. And I, and I've said this before, I said it on a podcast episode that I did when I turned 40, which was, I said that I don't know whether I'm 
the dumbest guy in the world for not being married and not having children at this stage or whether I'm the smartest person because maybe I'm just so smart that I don't go down that route until I'm, you know, 100% either in love or energetically connected with that person and know for sure that, it, you know, this marriage is going to last. So, um, I, Having said that, I do wake up in the morning and, and recently, the last six months or so, I have been thinking, you know, I've kind of like subtly looked over or since I broke up with my last girlfriend, I should say, and looked over and gone, well, there's no lifelong partner here. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Is there something in the universe or something that I'm putting out to the universe that's not making this click? So what would you, what exercise would you recommend that I do to try and A, figure out if there is something energetically that I'm doing wrong and B, how to actually try to bring a life partner in, in into my life in a, in a romantic sense. I mean, how personal do we want to get? You can, we can <laughs> go personal. It's fine. I've, I've, I've talked pretty personal on this, this, on the podcast before. So people know me and my story. I've talked about breakups and crying and crying to my mum on the phone and all kinds of stuff. Like Bless a little girl. When I was there. Anyway, <laughs> we can go personal. Okay. So then the, what is your script in your head? Is it that there, I just don't meet people that get me? Or is it that there's just no options? Or is it that people here aren't my kind of people? What is the script that sort of encourages or accepts or justifies the absence of any romantic scenarios? Uh, okay, there's a few things. So, for example, to get you an idea, yeah. for like some people, it's they just don't get me. Right. Or I'm just super busy. Right. Or I'm not attracted to people that are attracted to me. Right. So there's some examples of some scripts. Okay. So what would yours be? Um, mine would be uh, I'm too picky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm spoiled for choice. Yeah. I feel like I'm spoiled for choice. I, I, don't, I don't really have a problem attracting women, but I... Oh, I toss them over. No, no, <laughs> please. I don't, don't take this the wrong way. I'm not wanting to do it, but I don't. I don't. I'm messing. With I know. It's obvious you're not. Um, yeah, it's obvious I'm a complete. I'm clearly hopeless with women, but I don't seem to have a, a problem with attraction. Yeah. But I, I seem to have a problem with um, turning that into long term uh, connection and yep. long term relationships. So the story I tell myself is that I've got too many options. So I have I have grass is greener syndrome. Yeah. Um, and so I'm almost like this paradox of choice, you know, yeah. I, I get stuff. Oh, is that one? No, should that one, that one, that one. Mm -hmm. Um, I live in America and, and even though I'm Australian, I mean, I'm Australian, but I live in America. And even though I'm a naturalized citizen of America and I've been living here for 10, 10 years, I still feel that part of me one day is going to go back to Australia. Mm -hmm. And so I, the story I tell myself is, well, I shouldn't get involved with a woman here because I'm going to go home eventually, even though I could take her back there. So the story, I always almost feel like I'm still a backpacker, you know, I'm still like in a temporary, You're not putting down roots. I'm not putting down roots at all. Never I haven't put down roots here. So I almost feel like I'm homeless. Like I'm yeah. just temp in a temporary situation wherever I go. Yeah. Uh, I bounced around between Airbnbs for a while living in places. This is my first place that I've had in, with, with any great longevity. So a bit of a gypsy vibe. I'm a yeah, massive gypsy guy. And I, you know what? I love it, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. I do love it. But I, the story I tell myself is that the reason I don't have the relationship is because I am a gypsy. Yeah. Because I have that gypsy vibe. So did, does, that, does that answer your question? Absolutely. Okay. So there are various components to that. Mm -hmm. One, it's massive safety. Mm -hmm. It's safer for you to not build connections because one, I might disappoint someone Two, I could disappoint myself because at any time I could leave and be elsewhere. Mm. So it's really an inability to just be where you are. Mm. So ultimately you're looking at five years down the track mm. as opposed to just being where you are right now. Mm. And that's connected to grass is always green. Mm. Whenever you're in a situation, you're really using your mind, your like analytical sort of components. Mm. And then you're using your eyes for physical attraction as opposed to feeling into being heart drawn towards someone. Mm. So it sounds like you're not letting your heart catch up with where you presently are. Okay. And so that can be part of that gypsy thing. You know what I mean? Like in your mind, you've accepted that you probably will go back to Australia, but the truth is you could meet someone that would then mean they would go with you anyway. Mm. So it's just a bit of an excuse. Mm -hmm. So the deeper thing would be 
like being focused where you are right now. Mm -hmm. What could happen even tomorrow is really irrelevant, mm -hmm. but allowing yourself the potential to be loved by someone in this moment and are not needing to be any more than that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people get really caught up in the concept that if it's like it needs to be the one, mm -hmm. there are plenty of ones for people. For mm -hmm. some people, yeah, they may have one person, they'll be with them forever. And everyone's story is different. So for some people, the person that you're with that lasts for two months, that's your one for two months. Mm -hmm. The next one is the next one because each relationship is like a homework assignment and it builds you up to the next particular one. Mm. But a lot of people sort of separate themselves from that idea of, well, they sort of come at it from, I don't want to invest in something that I can see that it might not go long term. Right. That's, that's, I, I have that feeling. Like I got a point where I've had attraction with women. I've got their number, but I've been unsure. And I'm like, I don't want to call them up and ask them out because I'm not, uh, you know, I'll just disappoint them or it's not, it's not going to pan out or I'm not convinced on that. It's only when I'm absolutely sure that oh, I definitely want to take that out that I'll, that I'll actually invest the time. Absolutely. And that comes down to Virgo. Virgo's hypercritical, love a good list. If these things don't match up, if it doesn't look sensible on paper, mm -hmm. because the trigger is the Virgo being the mother of the Zodiac, mm -hmm. I might hurt someone. Right. So I need to be sure in accordance with my list, whether or not this makes sense, mm. because I wouldn't want to hurt my goal more so is to nurture. Right. But the thing is, is that you don't know what you're going to learn by going on a date with someone that's not going to go anywhere. Right. And that comes down to, you know what? I don't know anything, but I know the universe will teach me what I need to know by what comes my way. So what's a practical exercise that I can do to try and solve this emotional block that I'm putting around this in my romantic life? So don't be so focused on long term. Okay. Don't be focused on big end game scenarios. Mm -hmm. Instead, just look at it in terms of like each date homework. Mm -hmm. It's looking at how do I interact with this person? Let me just have fun with this person. Let me make them laugh. Let's laugh together. We don't need to see each other ever again, but it's engaging with people. And then it's about working out how that makes me feel by each date. I drill into what components of other people I feel drawn to mm. and what I'm not. Mm. But in the absence of even engaging with people, you romanticize what the perfect person should look like. Right. And this perfect person for a Virgo kind of becomes an impossible person to experience. Right. Because again, it comes from safety. Mm. I want to separate myself from anything that AI might hurt other people and then be responsible for it. But two, I could get hurt because I could get disappointed and it might not be as much as I want it to be. Mm. So it's about lessening all of that sort of intensity mm -hmm. and more so just approaching each experience as it comes to you mm -hmm. as a learning experience. Okay. And then it, that being okay. Okay. So increase my dating, but just, Big, big. But with more awareness. With, mis with more awareness. And the focus is, am I having fun? Okay. Is this respectful? Is this bringing out aspects in me that I enjoy? Okay. And that's kind of a good way to approach it. It doesn't mean going and having sex with everyone. Mm -hmm. It's because that might highlight the fact that you're distracting from yeah. things. But it's more so that like, I don't need this person and I to date for two months. Mm -hmm. It's just okay, I'm attracted to this person. Attraction means drawn to. Mm. And often karma is mistaken for physical attraction because karma is the process of being drawn to a lesson. Mm. So each time we're drawn to something, we need to be open enough to just experience what it has to teach us. Is there anything that I can do in my home from a feng shui kind of way to be able to be more open to, to love or be more open to a great relationship in my daily life? Absolutely. Besides, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can obviously start with Virgo's level list. So you want to really think about that concept of what are 10 things I would want in a perfect relationship, mm -hmm. things that I want to feel, things that I want to experience or do. Take your 10 and then sort of drill them down to five mm -hmm. and then maybe a little bit later, drill them down to three. The idea is you solidify a deeper understanding of what's important to you. We're back to a value system again. Mm -hmm. 
and helping you sort of feel into that. But then feng shui wise, we would look at the bedroom. We mm -hmm. would look at various components of your bedroom to make sure it's balanced. Mm -hmm. We'd look at the colors that are in there because mm -hmm. obviously when we think of romance, we think of reds, pinks, mm -hmm. warmth. Right. Then, I mean, there are other areas of the place as well that we can look at as well. But I mean, the sort of go-to place is definitely in the bedroom. Okay. So especially if you've got things in there that are focused on work or pictures of family members, mm. anything that's not focusing back on love or relationships is an energetic distraction. Right. Okay. So I got to redo my, my bedroom to be more like romance, right? And because it signifies you're open to romance. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So and just a couple of little things that you could do for that. Uh, is you said which colors red colors yeah so reds are good for relationship you don't want to have too much red because yeah. that can signify too much fire okay um but you want to make sure that your bed can be accessed from three directions because oftentimes in smaller spaces people have them right up against a wall so what that really means is that you are the only one that can get to the bed so if you're single that means there's not room for anyone else to get in there right and then if i mean obviously this is all space permitting um the traditional sort of format is that you want to have, um, if you've got a bedside table, you want one on the other side because it says then we're going to be balanced in this relationship. What I have, you can mm -hmm. also have. Mm -hmm. um, and in the far right-hand corner, if you're looking at your room, traditionally you would have things like two rose quartz in there if we're talking about crystals. Um, and you may even have two red candles. And if you want to go a little bit further, they say that you should light two red candles for about five minutes every Friday because Friday is ruled by Venus and Venus is of course the planet to with love, sensuality, all okay. that sort of stuff. Okay, very good. Now, just before we, we wrap this up, we're, we're talking to Todd Savas, who's a spiritual teacher. Make sure you check him out at toddsavas.com, Instagram. Yep, Todd Savas, same T thing. Twitter as well. Send a tweet out to Todd right now if you're listening to this as well and just let him know. Um, and make sure you copy me in on that as well at James Swanick and at Todd Savas and just let us know, um, you know, one thing that you've taken from this so far, you know, Absolutely. how is this going to help you ask Todd a question? I'm sure he'd be thrilled to answer the question on, on Twitter, but make sure you do follow him. And when you uh, leave a comment on his Instagram page, make sure that you tell him that you heard him, uh, uh, on the, on the James Swanick show or Absolutely. wherever it is that you're watching or listening to this right now. Um, okay. So last thing before we wrap this up, um, Yesterday, you did something when, when there are stresses in your life and how do we minimize the stress or how do we let it go to the universe? And this is, again, coming back to what we're talking about is spirituality. And we did an exercise where you, you made us um, write down with our right hand or pretend to write down uh, with our right hand into our left palm whatever issues that we have going on in our life right now, like I'm not enough or I don't make enough money or I'll always be single and write it down. Can you just explain? And then we did a certain thing. For, I'll let you take it from here. But what could you explain that process and what the point of it is? Okay, so these are just various exercises that align your conscious mind with a, a method or a process to mm. deal with a very intangible concept. Mm. So what we did with the hand, um, you would want to take, if you were going to do it at home, you would take your power hand, which is the hand you write with. You would take your palm the, of the opposite and you would write down the topic. So right now, whatever the most stressing, concerning thing is, because again, if we're talking about connection or disconnection, the stresses and the fears are going to disconnect you from that sense of it's all okay. Mm. So we want to deal with it for that purpose. And you would write in your palm, I do this eyes closed. So, mm -hmm. Eyes closed, write in your palm whatever it is. It could be money, it could be love, whatever it is. And then if you're going to do the exercise of the worth exercise, you would then open your other hand and you would close your eyes still and focus on an image of you in your palm. Mm. And you'd see yourself there and then you would focus on those five amazing things about you. And with your eyes closed, you would see the you grow because of the words that you were focusing in on yourself or you're essentially you're praising yourself you're giving yourself permission to focus in on the true nature of you mm -hmm. and so as you're filling that image with more energy that also means that you're taking away energy because you're not focused on the stress mm. and so by doing that you'll notice that energy and size goes to you as opposed to the stress mm -hmm. and by doing this you're essentially activating a component that's a very spiritual principle of sapping the energy from the negative mm. and filling it towards something positive. Mm -hmm. And when we do this, 
the issue becomes less important. It doesn't seem insurmountable. But then also, we sort of see it in perspective to ourselves. Mm. In the greatness of everything that you are in relation to money, it's sort of like it's not even a worry mm -hmm. because you're reminded of all of these amazing things about you so you can deal with everything that you're experiencing. Right. But if you're just in your mind laying there at night, just focus on I've got to make more money, I've got to make more money, I've got to make more money, it's going to seem like a terror mm. because it's not weighed against any kind of value associated with you. Right. So uh, I had a I, – what did I write it in, in my hand yesterday? I wrote in my hand is that I um, – I, I said that I've been waking up in the morning for the first few minutes recently and just been going, oh, I've got to get this stuff done. I'm, I haven't got enough. I haven't achieved enough. And it's just sort of been creeping into my, my mind. So yesterday I wrote down, you know, I'm not enough or I haven't achieved enough or I'm not successful enough and I wrote it down. And then you told us to minimize those words so it fits into the palm and then imagine a big big hand coming down from heaven almost like yep. from whatever higher power you believe in yep. coming down and scooping up those words and taking it back up. Absolutely. And, uh, I, I must admit when that happened afterwards, I was like, Oh, that's not, not such a big deal again after all, you know, like it's okay. It's like mentally it was just like, almost like you set fire to this crap story that you're telling yourself all the time. Um, so it was a very powerful exercise. Um, how often should we do that whenever we feel stress or should we do it every day or should we do it like, the, with this sort of stuff, there's no rule. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you're doing something positive for yourself, so there's no harm in doing it more mm -hmm. often. And it's better than you just stressing about it. Mm -hmm. So if it's pushing you, especially if you can't sleep or you're worried or whatever the case may be, if it's taking you away from feeling hopeful or optimistic or positive, then you should definitely do something like that to deal with it. Right. Because I always say that stress is just proof that you aren't, finding a solution. Yeah. Your mind is just jogging yourself. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? But if you knew what to do, you would have found it already. Yes. So that means you're obviously not ready for the answer, mm. but then also you probably need to ask for help from something bigger mm. than yourself. Mm. So by doing something like this, you bring yourself back into that. And the idea of getting the hand to come down and take it away, it was prefaced with now ask the universe, please take this concern away from me and then visualize the hand and get it to take away because it's that concept of, okay, surrendering it up and allowing things to help. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, we covered a lot of ground there, didn't we? We did, um, uh, what is spirituality? We talked about um, being spiritual, higher power, or being just connected, having being connected to a greater meaning and being connected to a greater purpose. Doesn't even matter if you don't believe in spirits or God or whatever. As long spirituality is essentially being connected to a greater meaning and a greater purpose, and seeking it out, and seeking it out. And then we talked about um, an exercise on how to feel great about yourself, obviously, and to feel spiritual and feel connected, which is. Um, to ask yourself the question, what are five things that are amazing about me? Remember, we're going to be using words that do not focus on your actions towards other people. They've got to be words that are in relation to you. Things like intelligent, focused, powerful, ambitious, curious, healthy, strong body, great posture, great smile, creative, innovative. Do not use words like loyal, good listener, supportive, caring, generous, because they all imply that you have to rely on other people in order to to, to be those things. We're looking for words just for ourselves. Uh, tall, handsome, sexy, pretty, whatever it is that you want to say. Sometimes a little awkward or feel a little bit awkward when you try it initially, but just push through it. The more awkward, the better. The more awkward, the better. And then we talked about uh, romance, blocking, um, you know, maybe you're listening to this and you, you were in a similar situation uh, to me, or maybe you're in a relationship and you're just fighting and there's some kind of blockage going on. But for me, it was very much just um, in my situation, being very present and being open to being enjoying my time with a woman in that moment, not looking open at it. Yeah. And open to learning. Everything is a learning experience. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, and just on that, you yeah. can really interchange love for anything. It's always the same principle of what is the story that I'm telling myself that's keeping me from success. Yeah. And then you can drill into that. Okay. That's what I say about this. Mm -hmm. So let me now unwind why I'm not connecting with it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then a couple of great tips there on how you can get, set your bedroom up. Um, that'll be, a, that could be a completely different conversation. Like we could do that for another hour. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, and then also, of course, whenever you're feeling stressed and you've got some issue, the exercise of closing your eyes and writing down, pretending to write into your palm, whatever it is that is troubling you at that time, minimizing it and imagining a big hand coming up from the sky and just scooping those problems up and taking them away. That seems to diffuse whatever stress you're feeling in that moment. Um, again, another great way to connect to your spirituality. So Todd, this has been great. Thank you so much. I really My appreciate pleasure. that. Yeah. And make sure you check out Todd. Like I said, go to toddsavas.com. That's T O D D S A V V A S. Follow him on Instagram right now. If you're listening on the phone, then just literally go to your phone right now and type in Todd Savas. And on Instagram, I mean on Facebook as well, I do a card for every single day. And so essentially I help people see what the theme is, what you should work on, what you're sort of going to be energetically taken through. Right. So you get that every day for free. Okay, terrific. So there, you ch check him out. He's on social media at Todd Savas. Todd, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. And I will catch you, the listener and the viewer, on the next one.